This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This video is in Oceanography Playlist, looking at continental margins, both active and passive. So the margins is an area of the ocean, which includes the seas, which interacts with the coastline of the land masses with an island or the large continent. And as you see on the right hand side, this picture, you have the different degrees or colors of blue around the ocean. You see the lighter blue around the continents that designates or shows you where the shallower areas of the seas or oceans are, which is the continental margin, and where the deeper parts are, which is off into the ocean basin. On the left, this beautiful picture of Will Coates of the uh, west coast of Cornwall, and it is where I grew up and where I had my childhood, and it's an awesome place where the Atlantic meets the coastline of the uh, UK. This video is going to focus on the passive continental margin, which is different to the active. So the passive is classically known as the Atlantic because a lot of the passive margins between the ocean and the, and the land, the continents, are located around the Atlantic Ocean, both on the North American side, the European side, African and South American. That's basically originating from the split and division of Pangaea as a supercontinent and how the Mid-Ocean Ridge formed and started to force the plates away in a divergent plate boundary, which we now know as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And the Atlantic Ocean began or was formed as part of the Wilson Cycle. So the Connell Margin is that transitional component between the landmass and continents that are above sea level and the deeper ocean basin, the ocean floor, which is on average in the Atlantic around three to three and a half thousand meters, around 10,000 to 11,000 feet. So that deeper part of the ocean is going to rise up over certain distance at certain angles through onto the beach where you get onto the land. Now, this is called the continental margin, and it's broken into three parts. You have the continental shelf, the slope, and the rise. Now, starting from the coastline, from the beach, uh, you're going to have the continental shelf, which is that shallow water, very low-angled decline into under the water. And as you go further away from the continent, from the coastline, it gets deeper and deeper, but slowly. So towards the end of the shelf, you get what's called the shelf break, which is the division between the gentle sloping sh shelf and the next part of the margin called the continental slope. Now the shelf can extend between five kilometers up to 400 based on the location. This can vary greatly and the degree of slope can also vary as well. But it's usually a shallow area and this is where you get the seas versus an ocean. So that part of the water that's around the coastline that's partly enclosed. Now the Connell Shelf turns into the Connell Slope, which is that sharp increase in degrees, dropping down deeper into the ocean quickly over a short distance and can range from two to five degrees in the Atlantic for the degrees slope. Now it goes into the deeper ocean and towards the ocean basin. And then connecting this would be the Connell Rise. That again, is a section that's transitional between the steeper slope and the more gentle, flatter abyssal plain and ocean basin. So the rise and the slope and the shelf all combine to make a Connell margin. And in this case, a passive one means that there is a lack of an ocean trench. There is a lack of tectonic activity at this boundary between the ocean and the land compared to an active margin which has the trench, has earthquakes and and volcanism and magmatic material, and it has subduction, known as a subduction zone. So a colonel margin in general covers about 20% of the ocean. Now this rise from the ocean floor, the basin, up to the coastline and the area of the continent which is above sea level or ocean surface is very important because of the different angles, degrees, and that can influence erosion, geomorphology, the features, and the shape of the coastline. So it this is part of the crust, the 
crustal layer on the top of the Earth in terms of the Earth's interior. Now, the moho separates the crust and the mantle. The mantle is going to be the lithosphere, but the crust is attached to the lithosphere. So we have the ocean crust, which is thinner, versus the coronal crust, which is a lot thicker. Now, in terms of geology, the coronal crust is a combination of andesitic and granitic rocks, and the ocean crust is a combination of some gabbros and mostly basalt. So the mafic versus the felsic rocks. And you have a lot of sedimentary deposits and a lot of layered sedimentary or sediment that is accumulated on the shelf, in particular in the slope and the rise. Now, in terms of a passive margin, you're going to have submarine canyons, some alluvial fans, and turbidity currents that are going to bring down through these undersea canyons and these ancient river deltas that would drain into the ocean when the ocean or sea level was a lot lower during times of, let's say, ice ages and global glacial periods. You have these submarine canyons and old ancient riverbeds and river systems and deltas that would be part of the slope and the shelf and would deposit a lot of sediment into the ocean floor.